life-saving advice, if you ever get caught up in one, is try to stay afloat, save your energy, yell for help if you can, and if you can swim, go parallel to the shore, and then once you're out of the current, you can swim back. The biggest advice, just not to swim against the current, to go directly back to shore, you'll tire yourself out. It's gonna be your instinct, but you will use a lot of energy and it is very difficult to swim against the strong currents. Joining us now, Dr. Stephen Leatherman, Florida International University Coastal Science Professor. Uh, glad to have you with us. Um, this is pre preventative, right? We've gotta know a lot about rip currents before we get in the water. What do we do if we get caught in one? We talk about instinct. Um, how long does it take to swim with it and, and get back to shore safely? Well, if you're caught in a rip current, it's going to be taking you offshore. It doesn't take you under. A lot of people think it takes you under. It does not. So best thing to do is to stay calm because a lot of people panic. And as you mentioned earlier, people try to swim against the current. Absolutely wrong thing to do. So what you should do is realize that these currents are very narrow channels in the ocean. So swim, swim parallel to shore and you'll break loose of it. Then you can get back to shore. That's the best thing. The other thing is float. If you don't know how to float, you can float with the current, it depends on how far it's going to take you offshore, and then you swim away from the from the rip, but back to shore. So those are two strategies to escape a rip current. How long does it typically take, Dr. Leatherman, to carry you out? How far do typically people go and then to get back and circle your way safely to shore? I mean, we're talking a matter of a few hundred feet or further. Well, normally it's a few hundred feet for, for uh, areas which don't have big waves. But you go to California, it could take you out a thousand feet or more. So it depends on the size of the wave because the waves are the energy source. And as they break, they pile water up on the beach. And that water has got to come back uh, into the ocean. And where there are breaks in the bar, that's where it funnels the water offshore. That's a rip current. So you need to look out for them. They're very hard to spot. Some places are obvious where the water is murky, uh, the river, but you see a place where the waves are not breaking. In Australia, they say, seek the breaking, seek the white water. That means go where the waves are breaking. Because the waves are breaking on bars, and the bars, there aren't going to be rip currents there, because rip currents are where there are just depressions or holes in the bars. So the calm water looks like, in some cases, the best place to swim, but that's deceiving. It's counterintuitive. Right. So head for the waves. Uh, the other thing, you say low velocity rip currents are the most dangerous. What are those and why? Well, here on Maui Beach, we're the number three grounding beach in the nation, which is very surprising because we have very small waves normally. And yet, uh, and you can go out pretty far and the water's real shallow. And so you think everything's fine. The waves aren't very big, only maybe two feet high. The next thing you know, you can't touch the bottom. If you're not a good swimmer or can't swim, then people will really get in trouble. And and so even though the rips are pretty, pretty weak, you know, less than a foot per second or less, that's a weak rip, rip current. Uh, you still get into big trouble, and a lot of people drown at Miami Beach, and particularly after that, we have good lifeguards, but a lot of people swim after the lifeguards go off duty. So you should swim with the lifeguard, and you should know how to swim if you're going in the ocean. Yeah, and follow those flags, right? The red flags are for heavy rip currents. Um, I understand you also use dye to gauge the speed of a current. What have you learned about currents and their danger using that method? Well, we use a dye also to illuminate the rip current, because rip currents aren't always obvious. A lot of people don't even see them. Big, you know, you see waves breaking. You got understand waves. But a lot of people say there's no currents out there. I don't see a thing. That's the problem because here in South Florida, and you're showing some pictures of that before, the rip currents are what we call clear water rips. There's no sediment in the water. This is good because you can see your feet. You know, people like to see through the water, mm -hmm. but that means the rip currents don't show up. If you go to where there's a river coming out, a lot of sediment, you see this murky water going offshore. We don't have that in a lot of beaches in Florida don't have that. We don't have any true rivers coming to the sea. So we have uh, clear water, which is wonderful, but the rips are hard to see. Can we get rips in big lakes? I mean, I'm thinking about the Great Lakes here in Chicago. We're on Lake Michigan, or is this just something on the ocean shores? You're absolutely right. Michigan, Lake Michigan has rip currents and quite a few drownings, particularly on the southern part of Michigan. And it's usually when the wind is blowing from the north. And, you know, Lake Michigan is a very big lake. Now, very small lakes don't, regular lakes don't have them, but Michigan's a big lake and very deep. And sure enough, uh, Indiana Dunes uh, State Park has had a lot of drownings. It has some around Chicago, some over Wisconsin. So yeah, there's there's rip currents there, and you be be aware. And again, uh, those are not always easy to spot sometimes.
Yeah, so head for the waves, follow the flags, and swim with it. Let it take you out and come safely back to shore. Uh, just remain calm. All things that can keep you safe this summer in the heat. Uh, Dr. Stephen Leatherman, thank you for your time and for all the research you're doing to keep us safe. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.